Hi, that is David Bishu. And that is Anders Hanola. We are light nerds and passionate about light and shadows. Lightbybisho.com is the home of sharing knowledge, videos, live events, workshop, and much, much more. After many years of trying different concepts, we have finally found a unique way to help you to understand how light really works so you can upskill with a smile. Lightbybisho.com has five sections with very different types of content. You're just about to see one full episode from one of the five sections. So for you to really understand what and how we are doing this, here is a full episode from the Soapbox section. This will be similar to the Academy Lives we did weekly on Profoto's Facebook for a year. We hope you enjoy this. Today uh, we are going to talk about depth of light. Yes, what is the depth of light? That is something really important to be aware of and how to control it. We're going to take a, not a super deep look into it, but a very important, necessary deep look into it. Exactly. And, and this, this, we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible, but without missing out any important parts. And without any strange magical explanations that you can see out there. <laughs> we are just telling the truth here. And today we have, except for me and Anders, we have also two dogs running around here. So if you hear any barks or may maybe some strange sn <coughs> snorking sounds, is that a word? Snorking? No. <coughs> yeah. It's just <laughs> like the dogs. pigs. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. And so they are the studio dogs, uh, yeah. Gunner and Arne. Yes, that's and, and they might run around. Yeah, here we go. Here we have Arnie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And Gunner is somewhere here too. Yes. And, uh, uh, and what's going to happen, we are, we are not in the Profoto studio today. We are in David's studio. Yep. And uh, so we can take a look at, here's the setup, and there's me and there's David's hand <laughs> over there. Uh, so that's the little corner where we are at. Uh, we will talk a little bit about theory. We will also shoot and so that we can see in practice on how to manage the depth of light and inverse square law. Uh, and I think at the end, there's also a trick, right? So where, where you, David, you have, you're going to show us a trick on how a little, little bit of kind of how to fake the depth of light. Uh, if, yeah. you, if you're not in a large, huge studio like we are now, uh, if you're in a small area, you can, you can kind of fake the impact as if you were in a big studio. Exactly. We, we will look a bit into that. So, um, yeah. yeah. You have pre prepared a presentation. I have. Yes. So that I thought we would start with the kind of the theory part, and uh, that will help us to kind of grasp the concept of the depth, depth of, of light. light. Exactly. And that is so true. Uh, so we're going to talk about the depth of light. Yes. So let me let me pick up the presentation. Yes. And we do a little something like this. And as always. When David does a presentation, there will be animations and all that. So he spent literally all night. Uh, I think the last message I sent to you was about 2.30. Yeah, yeah, it was about 2.30. <laughs> and I thought, I'm like going to sleep now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but anyway, so enjoy this presentation. And we'll talk around uh, the inverse square law. Yes. We have what is that? Yes. The inverse square law. I'm sure that many of you, maybe most of you, have heard about it. Uh, some people find it kind of scary. Some people find it like a, uh, a trustworthy uh, uh, pillow to sleep on. It, it's, people have really different ways of, of uh, looking at it. And we are going to look at it. And I have chosen to, ex to, to the subtitle it like this. The law that explains the effect of distance. Because that is what it's all about. The effect of the distance between the light source and the object you are lighting. Uh, what happens when so. you have it in different distances. So here we have an image. Um, we see a camera and we see four uh, identical twins. Do you say twins with their four? <laughs> Quadruplets. Quadruplets, yes. Yeah. And uh, we have a light source really, really close to the first model, right? 
because uh, the inverse square law is the effect of the distance. So it is all about the distance between the light source and the object you are uh, putting the light on. So that is what we're going to look at. So this image uh, shows exactly, when, exactly this, when the light source are close. And if we look at this from uh, a, uh, in top, a top view, view yeah. we can see that the, it's the same thing. We have the camera, we have the four the quadruplet uh, twins, and uh, the softbox, the light source, really close to the model. Okay, so what happens if we move the light source far, far away? What happens to the light? The camera will take an image of those, the quadruplet models, <laughs> and if we put the light source really close, what happens to the light then? There is a difference, and that is the, uh, that is the depth of light that yeah. we're going to look into. And we're going to shoot as well, so it's not only going to be exactly. interactive video. So we, we, we are going to shoot, so we, and I'm going to walk around with the gimbal and so we can see. Exactly. Yeah. So this part is uh, mostly for just defining what we are going to talk about. Yeah. And then we have this controversial topic. Yes, <laughs> uh, because to be able to explain what is going on, what is going to happen, we need to think about light as rays or light. And there is people who says that the rays isn't any rays, but that's another topic. Yeah. So to simplify this, we are just going to uh, see light as rays of light. So in this image, we can see a top view of a softbox that is spreading out light, like a sun feather. Uh, every light ray is, a, is in a different angle. Okay? This is really, really simple. But what happens now if we put in an object here? So let's throw in a blue ball, and if we, we count the number of rays that hit the ball at this position, we can see that we have one, two, three rays that are hitting. I have actually counted them very, very carefully. One, two, three rays hit the ball, and that means that the ball is three light. So yeah, to three rays bright. Yes, three rays bright. Yeah, that's the way it put it. What happens now if we put the ball closer to, to the light source? So three rays bright. We put the light source closer, so we get five rays of light. And if we put the light so, uh, the, the ball even closer, we get seven rays. And then we have nine rays. And then we have another two, 11 rays. And we have 13 rays. And if we go even closer, we have 15 rays of light. So the closer the object is to the light source, more rays hit the object. That is not, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? But this is really important. And especially if you look at the distances between those numbers, the three, the third, uh, the three ray line is really far away from the five ray line and so on. And they go closer and closer. And this is what we are going to use. This knowledge is what we are using when we are using the effect of the distance or the inverse square yeah. law. I mean, so, so the, I mean, the difference between 13 rays and 15 rays is only two ray difference there. Yeah, exactly. And it's really tight. And, and between three and five, it's also only two rays different, but it's a huge distance. Exactly. And this is what, you know, you can call it light fall off or... Yeah, exactly. So this is what stuff. causes the light fall off. When yeah. you have a light far away and it's darker, it's because less rays hits your subject. That is what makes it darker. Each ray, each, if you could pick out one ray, one ray doesn't get any darker. It travels on forever until it hits something. It has the same amount of energy. But it is how many rays that hits your subject that makes it as bright as, uh, as, it, uh, as it is. Yeah, as it I mean, because we, we are looking at, at rays of light. I'm using these, uh, 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 I mean, it's, it's not rays, but, but, but rays of light which are like 12.7 billion years old from the Big Bang. Yeah. Uh, so they, they truly travel for forever. But then, what then? So let's really move the, the, light the light source, source further, further back. back. So we backed up the light source to put the ball, the blue ball, where we have only three rays of light again. Okay. Yeah. So how close can we get the object, the blue ball, before five rays hit? So if we move the light source a bit closer, they will have three rays and not five, three rays. In, in all these five positions of the ball, we have three rays. One, two, three, four, five blue balls, and they are, all are three rays bright, okay? So 
this distance from the first ball on the left to the last ball, we have the same amount of light. In other words, it's equally bright. And what happens if you move it closer? Yep. So, there we have the first ball is hit by 15 rays and the next ball 13 and then 11, 9 and 7 and 5. In other words, the balls will fade to dark. So the closer we are to the light source, we, we achieve uh, a fade to darkness. Yeah. The fall off will be much quicker than when you had them uh, further back. Yeah, and then if you move the same ones back again, they are all equally bright. Exactly, and you can see that, that white surface uh, below, un under the balls, that they, they, it is uh, almost like a... Oh, it, it's, yeah. e it's, it's equally bright yeah. over that distance. So, the distance, the further away you have your, your light source, the more even light will be over a distance. And, and here we see a, a, an example of how it would look like when you use the, the models. Exactly. You can see the first model on the left. When the camera is exposed properly for the model on the left, she is perfectly exposed. And then it goes darker because uh, there's really many rays that hits the first model and really few rays that hits the last model. Yeah. So if we put the light source really far away, what will happen to the light of the models is this you see that they are equally bright. And why is it that the model, the, the model on the far right <laughs> is looking is towards, looks, yeah, towards yeah. me? It looks like she's a serial killer yeah, or something. Yeah, she's really dangerous. She, she's yeah. the one, you know, the, the, the fifth wheel of those four, <laughs> <laughs> of those four quadruplets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's really crazy. Uh, okay, so the so light source far away creates an even light. And you can think of it like uh, the sun in the sky. The sun is really, really far away, which means that we will, uh, when, the, when the rays hit the Earth, those rays are mostly the parallel rays, very parallel rays. They actually, I think they diverge like 0.5% or so. Mm. So you have, all, you, have, you have parallel rays, a race that hits the Earth that makes it evenly bright in two different cities. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah, even two cities or if you take a football field. Yeah, football field is yeah. It, it, it isn't brighter closer to the sun uh, at one goal and the other goal, it, 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 they are equally bright yeah. because the sun is so far, far away, away so, so they are only parallel line, parallel rays of light that yeah. hits the football field. So this is the same effect and this is something that you can use when you are uh, as a photographer, when yeah. you are working with light. And that's what we call Inverse yes, square the inverse law. square law. The intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source. And this feels really good to learn <laughs> and to say, and you, you feel so knowledgeable. Some people even have that on a t-shirt. Yes, yes, they <laughs> Like do. you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and, and then the guy on the uh, right, it's, it's me. Yeah, okay, that is you, yeah, yes. Great <laughs> to know that. But now you, we, I think we, you need to show this, because this is really one of these things that I know it's important, it's good to understand and know this, and we can use it practically when we are shooting. Yeah. But I think the best way is now to uh, get you up in here. Okay, 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 okay. So right. let's show it what this actually is, how you can use it. And uh, actually first we will show that it actually works for real. So to help us out with this, we have a flashlight, a B10 Plus. Is it this camera? Because cam it's that one. It's the one, the camera far, yeah, far away. far, far away. So the B10 Plus, new beautiful flash. And we have one, two, three, four models of today. And we have a camera. And what I will do, I will turn on the flash and I have the flash really, really close to the models here. I will turn this so you can really see this. I have the flash really, really close. It's about 60 centimeters from the first model. And I could actually take the gimbal and walk around yeah. a little bit and well, let's see if that works am so i on the gimbal camera no not yet not yet but now you are you can film uh, the dogs they are sleeping now it's just dark here 
So let's see. So now we have. Okay. Okay. So here uh, we have. Yeah, the so there, <laughs> there are the, the dogs. Yeah, they are sleeping. So, <laughs> they sleep the like. Cows. Sleeping dogs are good dogs. Yes. So here we have, the B10 is really close to the first phase here, and the light fades to dark. As it is further away, like this. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, okay. So now we have that, and then we have uh, a camera. Camera tethered to the computer. computer. Take an image. I will turn on the uh, remote. Okay. So theoretically, what would happen is that when I expose, so this guy is perfectly exposed, which we like. Yeah. Yes. He will have a lot of rays of light on him. Let's yeah. say 100 or something. 100. And this guy will have less rays of light. In other words, he will go darker and darker, and this guy will be the darkest one because he has the fewest rays of light. So oh, and now I don't believe you. Now we have to. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay, just try this. And here we go. Three, two, one, and boop. Okay, and then I need to Perfect. go over here and shift over. Anders has so many things to do. Yeah, I'm doing the camera and doing everything here and then we shift over to capture one boom okay now let's you see. should see did we have a good exp yes perfect yeah so the first guy on the left there he's he is uh, perfectly exposed and the next guy is darker and then darker and the darkest guy on the f furthest right on the farthest right uh, and this is because this is due to the inverse square law yes so if and, and and so now we have the light close, and if you would want to make these heads now equally bright, yes, then what I would need, you do with the light? Then? then I need them to have equal amount of rays hitting them. Now we don't have that. Now we have a lot of rays here and fewer rays in the back. But if I back this up, so we use those parallel rays of light, which we will get when we have the light far away. So I will actually put it as far away as possible, like that. Yeah, and now you can wave to the people in that camera. Waving, waving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we should have a more even light over those, over these guys. So I line up the heads perfectly and I will crank up the power because we will, of course, since we have uh, much fewer rays of light hitting. I need to expose my camera to bring in more light. Yeah, and, you and again, you're, you're exposing for the first guy, right? Exactly, I expose for this guy. Yeah. There we go. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, oh, maybe some more like that. Three, two, one, and boop. There we go. And then we go into capture one. And there was the line of guys standing there. And you can see that the first guy on the left and the last guy on the right, they are really equal yeah. in brightness. And, and how, what's, what's, what would you uh, say the distance is right now? I would say that the distance is about 11 meters. 11 meters, yeah. Yeah, or something like that. So, so again, it, it's clearly uh, good to have a long long distance exactly and, and, I, and so what, why why is this important i mean uh, it's not that that often when I, when i shoot uh, i'm just going to put the gimbal here i don't shoot people in a row like this you don't <laughs> <laughs> you don't shoot people in a row like this <laughs> no. well uh, it's this is an very rare well but but i understand that there's a purpose of of you showing this in the way you do exactly which and camera is on is it this one so now it's this one yes. yeah okay so this is an extreme example of course it's perfectly when you have people in a row like that but uh, the point here is that if you need a long depth of light this is called a long depth of light or i call it a long yeah. depth of light like if you have a group of people where you have a row with people here and an, a new row and a second row and a third row then you have a depth you want them to be equally bright uh, over, over distance. Mm. Then you need to have your light as far away as possible. Then you will achieve a longer depth of light. Yeah. But then also, I know that if this is good to know if you are, want to impact the background, right? Exactly. So if, if, I, if I move this black curtain a little, away a little bit. Yeah. And now we take the 
The guy at the back, I'm just going to move the other cans away. I'll help you with this one. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we use the light the now it's all the way in the back. The principle is, of course, exactly the same. We have our light source really, really far away. The light will hit our guy here. Yeah. Uh, but the light will also hit the background. And since the light is really far away, we, will, we can use this long depth of light to have a really bright background. Okay? So I take this image now, and I will not put any shadow on the man's way. Put myself on the left side of him. And here we go. Are you ready, Anders? Yes. Three, two, one, and boop. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So now you have a good exposed can head and a very bright background. Exactly. So this is uh, a way of co actually controlling the light of the background because when I bring my light closer I can really trim the perfect level of light on the background. Okay. So if I want a darker background I just bring the light closer. Why don't you? Oh, I do that. <laughs> so now you do the walk of shame. Yes. <laughs> and you can wave hi hi. Hi hi. <laughs> Let's bring in the light. I put it and since we're doing extremes now, I guess you're going to go ridic ridiculously, ridiculously close. Yes, <laughs> because I, am, I love the extremes. Actually, yeah. I think that often when, when I shoot, uh, you know, not plastic people like this, but real people, we are, all, or we are really often in extreme positions. We have the lights as far away as, as possible or as close as possible. We always, not yeah. always, but very often in those extremes, actually. And you don't have to be, you can all, of course fine-tune it and move it and you can exactly. find shades of grey for the background, Exactly. So now we go so now to the we extreme. We haven't changed anything on the background. The curtain is still, as you can see, it's pulled away. Yep. Yep, I will just fix my camera so we get a good exposure on Mr. Ken. Same thing. You yeah, don't mess this up, we're live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three, two, one and poop. Yes. Okay. And then we see, there's the image. Yeah, so now you clearly see, now the, uh, the background is, is almost completely dark. And exactly, and it's really important to understand that the, the darkness of the background is not caused by that the light doesn't uh, hit the background, because the light is still aiming towards the background. Yeah. So and, and we can see, now that we have the modeling light, we can actually see. Yeah. And, and if you do the shadow a little bit more in that, there you go. Oh yeah, there yeah. we have the shadow from the head. Yeah, no, but you, 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 it was just out of frame. So okay. when you do the waving. Do you see it now? Yeah, no, it's too bright. It's <laughs> so, too but bright. yeah, well, there is anyway. light. At, yeah, at the, least, so, so the light still hits the oh, background. Wait, 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 we can, oh, no, here, here on this one, now you can see on the, on the camera far away. Yeah, so the shadow here is from me, from the modeling light. Yeah, and, uh, and the flash is stronger than the modeling light. So. Exactly. Yeah, cool. So, because I know that many people confuse us, uh, get confused by this and think that it, I am just aiming the light away from the background, which I am not. I can, of course, but I want to prove that when you have the light source closer, you get a shorter depth of light and in other words, a darker background. So you can control the amount of light of your background by controlling the distance of your lights. And this is really, I, I would say that this is crucial because when you have, um, when you are lighting something, you always have a background. If you yes. want to light up the background, put the flash further away. If you do not want to affect the background, then you put the light source closer because then you can put in second lights on the background and control that uh, and, contr and have a control over the background. Okay? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You have to have this in your spine. Short depth of light, put it close. Long depth of light, put it f far away. And when you can have this really tuned in to your uh, flashlight so you can really feel how much you are affecting the, ba uh, the background. Yeah. I know that if I put these lights like this, like that. I can see that I'm lighting on the background, but I know by experience that my background will be pitch dark yeah, because I'm close. Because if I move to the distant camera, you can see there's a huge shadow of, from the can head over yeah. there. So, so clearly light is, it will hit the wall. Yeah, absolutely. But it would be a massive fall off, therefore 
the image turned dark, yes. the background. The and also if you have a, a, a flash on your camera in, in, the, in the hot shoe, what do you call that, on-camera flash? Yeah, on-camera yeah, flash. Like an A1 or so. Yeah. The same thing applies there. If you, have, if you are far away, in other words, the flash is far away, you will have a long depth of light. In other words, the background will much be much brighter. But if you go up close with your on-camera flash, your background will be much, much darker because you are close with the light. So close with the light equals back dark ground. Far away with your light equals bright dark ground. Background. Background. Dark ground. Dark <laughs> ground. Yeah. That's a new thing. Yeah, it's a new thing. The dark <laughs> ground. I'd like to, uh, before we sit down and chill and talk a little bit more, I'd like to fake this again. Uh, so I'll, I'll reset to yeah. th as and we I, had it. I put in these guys. Yeah. So we get these guys in as we had them. Boom, 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 and boom. Maybe something like that. Very important. Place the heads correctly. Yes, place <laughs> the heads. You don't want want any shadows that confuses people. <coughs> If the light source is close to the talent you're shooting, the background will be dark. And if the light is far away from your uh, subject... Like the sun. Yeah, like the sun. Then it will be equally bright, both the talent and the, the background. Let's, uh, I would try to put it like this. Uh, if you want to create a natural looking light, so, uh, a natural looking light like from the sun, you need to mimic what the sun does. Yeah. You need to have your flash far away. Then so your background will be bright. Take the uh, softbox and let's do the fake, fake thingy. Well, let's so take the So now we are in the conference room. We do not have this uh, big fancy uh, studio and we can't really be far away. So and if we, we place the softbox like we would and we have in the conference room four CEOs exactly. in a row. <laughs> in a row. <laughs> four docs in a row. Four CEOs in a row, like this. Okay, so now we have like this, the same setup as before, but with a softbox. It's really, really close. And we are not creating any beautiful light now. We are only talking about the depth of light. So I, I won't place it in any fancy way. Yeah. This softbox is really close to the first CFO person here in this small conference room, what will happen? A lot of rays of light will hit him and fewer here, fewer here and fewer here. This person will probably be really dark. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can also almost see that effect on the modeling light. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, but that, that's a tr traditional straightforward uh, positioning of a softbox that no <laughs> normally people do, right? Yes. Yeah. Especially okay. when standing in a row. Okay. <laughs> So here we go. Anders, are you ready? Yes. Oh, let me see. Let me see if I have a connection. Yeah, I got connection. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, and boop. Okay. So now we have four ducks in a row and uh, good exposure on the first CEO, but the guy in the back, he's dark. Yes. Uh, but we now have we a short depth of light. Yeah. But now this is now. And well, then, then the guy in the back, he says, you know, I'm not happy with this picture. I want to have as much light yes. as the and first Yes, and then one. I can take my softbox and run. Then I can, t I can take my softbox and run back to, uh, to the wall over there. But in this small conference room, I cannot yeah. because that wall is here. So yeah. how can I, in this extreme situation, make the light look like it is a long depth of light without moving the softbox or the or, flash. Or, or the light source. Or the light source, yeah. exactly. It doesn't matter what kind of light source. So this is what's called feathering the light. So if I turn the softbox like this, I have to see what I'm doing. If I turn the softbox all the way like this, they won't have any light, right? And if I bring it back, I can see that the, the, the guy in the furthest back will have some light and he will have none. Okay, so now we have a backwards lighting. He will be the brightest one and he will be pitch dark. You don't want that either. 
So when I just tweak this in, I can place the first guy in the, this, this um, what, do you, what do you call this? The edge, the shadow edge. And that is the feathered light, so to speak. If I put him just in the shadows, we just get a tad of light. I can get all these four guys to have really equal amount of light if I am. And actually, I'm thinking if we should take the gimbal and just look at it from the subject's point of view, because I think it's very il illustrative when yes. you see. Now here, I can see the softbox. If you do the, if you do the feathering thing. I do the feathering thing. Because if I'm, because if, as always, if you are a person, now we can see. And if, uh, so now I see, uh, now I see the light. You now see I the see light. the light source. If you move it all the way to, well, if I'm, if I'm here, yeah. this guy here. Now you won't see the light Now source, I won't right? see the, the light at all. In other words, he will be pitch dark. Yeah, and now then you're moving it. Now we, I'm starting to see some light. Yeah. So now I start to see some light then here. And you see and more and more of the light as and more, further. Yeah. So, so I see more and more of the surface of the softbox, exactly. which then compensates for the fall off. Exactly. So I can really tweak this together. Even so this one that light. is really close, he sees a small part. Yeah. And this guy, who's all the way in the back, he sees a big part of the softbox. So that's exactly what ha what's happening. And so without moving, the distance between the first talent here and the softbox, it's still sh close. Really, really close. But he only sees a small portion of the light source. Exactly. In other words, he will have very few rays of light on him. So I'll put you back here. And I think I'm ready to take this image and let's see. Oh, I want to make sure that. So what we are doing now is faking a long depth of light. Okay, okay Anders, um, up and running. Yeah, we got connection. Three, two, one, and boop. And here we see the result. We got four ducks in a row with almost equal amount of light. I mean, yes. of course, you can tell there's a small difference on the guy well, in sorry. the back. I'm sorry, Anders, I didn't do it perfectly, but... <laughs> no, but, but it's still, it's close enough. It's Absolutely. so much better than, than the other image. Yeah, uh, and I mean, the softbox soft box is like 30 centimeters from the first guy. Yeah, which is really close. Yeah, and this is, of course, an extreme situation. Yeah. I mean, uh, why would you put a softbox like this? I mean, this is... Yeah. I mean, I would get a e more even light if I bring out the softbox, but this was just to, it's still the same concept. If still I have the same principle, yeah. Yeah. You, am I on now? Yeah. Because if I put out the softbox no, no, like wait, wait, this, wait, wait. There you go. Yeah. if I put, up the so put out the softbox further away like this, of course, and I turn it towards them, this, the first guy will still be the brightest one. So I can still use this concept. The principle is still the same. I can still feather it like this. Yes. So when you're shooting like a group of people, the standard way is to have two umbrellas or two soft boxes, one from one side and one from the other side, and you feather it like this. So the guy closest to the light source is darker. Yeah. And you do it the same way from the other way. So you cross light them and feather them. Then you can get a really even amount of light without having the light sources really, really far away. And, and of course, this is um, something you see rarely uh, because um, uh, people tend to put point the light sources towards exactly. the topic. So this is the, the normal person. way to do it. Yeah. You point it towards the thing you're going to shoot. But if you tweak it like this, you can really place that, that light pattern evenly over distance. Yeah, because you're, you're shaping the light and uh, and, and you're working with, with the, 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 the whole light pattern, including the feathered part. So exactly. This so. is really, really a neat trick. And, and don't be afraid that you look like a fool because your flash is pointing in a different direction than the person. I mean, the, the, the main thing is the result. Exactly. I, I want to, to squeeze in another thing because now we have worked with, with feathering the light uh, horizontally, I think yeah. you say that. But you can do this uh, vertically too, also. Instead of, like if you have a, a light coming in and the light hits the floor, if the light, if the light source is really close to the floor, the floor will be too bright and you can see the fall off. 
and that yeah. really implies that you have a flash just outside of the frame. But if you lift up your softbox, then you can create this feathering thing but below, so you can have an even light on the floor, which makes it feel that you have your light source, that you have a really large light source really far away. Yeah. Even though it's really close. So you can do it in this direction too. This is so useful. And, uh, and not only you, you can get a really nice type of uh, light when you feather it, even if you're shooting one person, I, I use that the, the feathered part of the light a lot because it, yeah. it, it just looks good. And that, that is why these edges of the softbox that you have these these rims yeah, the is really good because then, then you have a more more pronounced uh, you edge. You have to better play control with. Yeah. exactly. And that's the difference because, for example, if you if you have an umbrella and you can put the diffusion on it, but then you don't have that edge. Exactly. Because I, I get the question. I got the question the other day uh, with, well, what's the difference between a, you know a five foot octa and a, and a, and an equally large umbrella? And for me, the main difference is that the umbrella with diffusion does not have the uh, the, the, the the recessed front which means that I don't, I don't have the control, the feathered yeah. area. As you, well. will, you will, of course, have, you can feather it, but you don't, but, but it, 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 it grows much quicker. So you don't have the same amount, you, have, you don't have the same control. Yeah. I mean, if these were really, really long, you would have super control over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, the recessed front is a really good thing, okay. which maybe we should mention that what happens when we have the light source far away I mean, uh, not the light source, what happens with the shadows? I mean, of course, we will have more sh um, sharper shadow edges, in other words, harder lights, when we have the light source far away. But when we have the light source, as we did now, when we end with the soft, we have the light source close, so it will be big. In other words, you will have wide shadow edges, but only in the vertical direction, because the softbox is still big in the vertical direction, but it gets smaller horizontally. So the, the, vert uh, the horizontal penumbras, the horizontal shadow edges will be uh, sharper. But that's maybe over course. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, that advanced. But I think this, this has been uh, very useful uh, to understand the depth of light and the uh, inverse square law. And I think that the key to kind of round it up uh, is, is really to, um, uh, that if you put the lights, so if the, the talent goes and you expose your camera for that person so that the person's face will be correctly exposed, then you will uh, uh, have a very, very fast fall off. It will go dark fast. But if you move the light far away and ex again expose the camera for the person's face and do the settings you need to do in the camera, then the background will be brighter. And this is what we sometimes call the uh, uh, mind uh, yeah, the yeah. bad word, <laughs> mind beep. Uh, so it kind of messes with your head that if you move the light away, things go brighter, and you move it closer, things go darker. But that's actually what, what, what happens. Exactly, and that, that is just pure physics. It, yeah. has nothing, it has nothing to do with products or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, sorry, I mean, if you put a lens on your... Oh, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, that's a whole yeah. different thing. Because yeah. if when you put, but it's still the same physics. Yes, absolutely. If, if you put a lens on, then you can collimate all your rays, so you have the same amount of rays going parallel. And you can go really extreme and put really aggressive lenses and move, let the light go back and forth several times in a, in a little device, and then it's called a laser. Yeah, and then just put yeah. out those that so are a lot really, of really parallel, parallel rays. Uh, so, so, but we're not going to go into optics, because that's a whole different school. Uh, yep. But soon we'll be there, I think. Uh, I know it can feel confusing, but uh, if you only remember the two things, if you move the light source close to the talent, background dark, far away, background bright, then you're, you're, you're almost there. Mm. And, uh, uh, and this is, again, very useful when you shoot portraits or environments on understanding where do you place the, uh, the light source. Exactly. Because this is where everything, I mean, that's how you impact what's going to happen with lights so yeah. and in placement of the lights. Yes. And if you have like a, a white background like we have here, with this technique, you can create that, ba that background in all gradients from dark to white. Yeah. Uh, and that is powerful. Yes.
And of course, the same if you have like a red background, you can control how dark will that redness be and so on. So that this always uh, applies yeah. because the, the, the depth of light is there. It is always there. Yeah. So I think we'll round off with all our viewers a little bit confused, but uh, watch this again and I'm sure you will get it. And, and especially the, the, the presentation part, because I, I think that's one of the best ways you have shown this whole thing. Now I have a little dog here. Yeah. He wants to come up in the lamp. Hello, you want to be in the picture as well? Yeah. Uh, these are really cuddly studio dogs. Uh, so so uh, watch it again. And uh, if you have any further questions, do pop, pop, put it in there. Uh, but I think you will, if you see it a couple of times, you will get it. Get it. Yes, uh, and I would say, try it out. Yeah. Try it out. Uh, that was a fast uh, time flies when you have fun and you talk about complex things. So with that, I want to thank you guys uh, for listening. And today was a, a tricky one, but every now and then we're going to you know, turn up the heat and go a little bit more advanced and cover these type of topics as well. Something that just came up in my head. I know that I shouldn't say this because it's... <laughs> uh, sorry. It's but it, when I get it, because uh, the light, when you put your light closer, I know that many of you think that you, when you have a softbox really close, it looks, r looks really nice because it does. It's really super soft and such. And when you have your light source really far away, you, it, it becomes more harder and so on. But I was in, I think it was in China, I got this question, why does it look so nice when you have your softbox really close? Is it, uh, is it only the, uh, the penumbras, the shadow edges? Is it something else because it looks so nice? And uh, actually, I started to do some fiddling about, about that and uh, I found out the, what I, I think we talked about before, the compression effect that when you have your light further away, and the light closer, mm -hmm. you, can, you can actually control the intensity of the reflections. Ooh, so when you yeah. have it really close, the reflections actually goes darker. Mm. And the opposite, when you have your light source further away, your reflections will go brighter. But that's another topic that's too. That's a whole different topic and it has nothing to do with inverse square law. Nothing to no. do with inverse square <laughs> law. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>